Welcome to the chapter 4 of the STA interview questions. So today I'll be discussing about the reset and clock gating. Let us begin. Coming to the question, first question, what are the different types of reset? You have the synchronous reset and you have the asynchronous reset. If the reset affects the state of the design only on the active edge of the clock, we term it as a synchronous reset. If the reset affects the state of this design asynchronously, that is whether a, there is a clock or running or not running, then the design is said to have asynchronous reset. One important point to note is we cannot afford to have glitches in the reset signal as long as it is meeting the setup and hold timing. So if a reset signal is generated by a set of internal logic signals in your design, Synchronous reset is the only go-to options as there will be glitches formed by mingling, mingling of the different conditions. For the designs with asynchronous reset, data path is independent of the reset signal. So logic levels in data path are less. This means that we can achieve higher frequency using asynchronous resets. The design can be reset even when clock is gated. Also, there is no workarounds needed during synthesis as in case of the synchronous reset. The only condition for an asynchronous reset is it needs to be glitch free. Even a small glitch on the reset can reset the design. So we saw in the previous slide what is the difference between a synchronous and an asynchronous reset. So what are the things to note during a async reset deassertion? So for a, for a flip flop with asynchronous reset, assertion of reset resets the flip flop asynchronously. The deassertion of reset leaves the output of the flip flop unchanged. The state of the flip flop will change only on the arrival of the next clock pulse. There are two scenarios here. The clock is gated during the deassertion of reset. The clock is running during the deassertion of reset. In the case of clock deassertion, during clock is gated during the deassertion of reset. In this case, we can safely deassert the reset and ungate the clock after the deassertion. If the clock is running during the deassertion, in this case, we need to take care of the recovery and removal timing of the deassertion of reset. The deassertion of reset must be synchronous with respect to the clock and reset synchronizers are needed in this case. So how are most designs modeled? So most designs are modeled to have a asynchronous reset assertion and a synchronous reset deassertion, in which case you need a reset synchronizer. We will discuss this in detail in the next slide. So what is a reset synchronizer? A reset synchronizer is basically used to model the behavior that I described in the previous slide, that is asynchronous reset assertion and a synchronous reset deassertion. So here you have a clock and an asynchronous reset. So when you have an asynchronous reset here, the reset synchronizer output is basically, it combinationally causes the output to go to zero because this register is reset and this will reset the functional registers here. So an reset assertion will asynchronously reset the registers. Let us now consider the reset deassertion case. When the reset is deasserted, that is here, you have the deassertion here. It will wait for the clock edge here. Basically on the first clock, the reset is synchronized to the clock edge here. On the second clock, you hit is synchronized to the clock here. This is to avoid any metastability and then the reset is deasserted to all the functional blocks in your register. This is to avoid any reset removal 
issues so let us now see what is a, a recovery and a removal check a recovery and a removal check is basically like a setup and hold for your reset signals so a recovery check ensures that the deasserted reset signal allows the clock signal to take the control of the output at the desired clock edge for this the reset signal must be stable at least the recovery time before the active clock edge and removal time after the clock edge this can be modeled similar as a setup check with a difference of it being single sided synchronous checks only coming to the last slide we'll discuss briefly what is clock gating and its needs clock gating is basically a common technique used to reduce clock power by setting off clock to modules so here you have an enable signal and a clock signal when the enable signal is high there is a clock going into the flip flops and when the enable signal is low the clock is gated to all your modules so there are specific checks in sta that needs to be done for clock gating we will not discuss those in details in this course but clock gating is one of the techniques that is used to reduce dynamic power thank you